What's going on everyone? How you doing? I hope you're doing well. Wanted to make a video about Brendan Shaw because I was surprised to see the headline say Brendan Shaw is quitting comedy. And I thought, "What well, really? Did he did he did he finally is he finally self-aware?" And I, I think he is kind of self-aware, but I'll get into that later. And um, it's been kind of funny seeing what people had to say. You already know what type of jokes people were going to say. Like, oh, when did he start his comedy career? Blah, 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 ha, ha, ha. And my main thing was just to get a confirmation. I was like, well, why? Why? And is this absolutely true? Well, it's true to a degree. He's not completely 100% quitting. He said he'll do some local spots, but his main gripe is that he's just tired. He's tired of touring. He's tired of being away from home. Yeah, I, th I think this time I just don't care. That's where I'm at. I, I got I to gotta be home more. I'm going to pull back from touring so much, and I just got to be home, man. I got to. I can't miss Tiger's Games. can't miss my boss D growing up, uh, baby girl. Uh, just I can't do it anymore. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I'm freaking tired. You know, I've been hustling for over 12 years now. Not that I'm going to stop doing the pods, but as far as the, the playing life and stuff like that, I got to I gotta chill out. I can do spots in L.A., I can do local, SoCal, NorCal, but going international or, you know, going across the, the freaking United States ain't happening right now. So I'm going to take a break from that and just focus on family and uh, do my thing, man. And, yeah, I mean, a lot of people who make their money by touring – whether just basically if you're an artist, right, if you're a comedian, musician, what have you, you'll do a lot of touring because that's the best way to make a lot of money and you will get tired of it. And so I think he figured out that, number one, his numbers were dwindling because the world caught on pretty fast to him not being very funny. I think him releasing specials was the worst thing he could do. Because if he kept it behind closed doors, if he kept kept it in the in just the the clubs and theaters that he was invited to or whatnot, there would be people that still liked his podcast and they'd probably you know, they would have that effect of there's a lot of people like there's artists I've known and this is some coming from somebody who's played in a bunch of bands, who's done a tour before, who's done a live podcast show with my podcast, the Snark Tank. There are people who are fans of you from something and they will rock with you no matter what so even like say if you're a comedian or a quote-unquote comedian like brendan schaub and you can say some funny quippy stuff on the podcast but you're not good at doing stand-up a lot of times though you'll just get the benefit of the doubt you're just there they like your aura they already like you and support you so they're going to give you laughs and stuff it's not authentic right it's like me I've even done live debates throughout my YouTube career. Uh, I was on a stage and, you know, I'm getting a, a, a standing ovation just coming out. And most of the things I'm saying are getting applauses and stuff. And my my opponents not really getting applause. And, and it just felt kind of gross. <laughs> it didn't feel authentic. But that's what happens when you I amassed this large audience from my, my main YouTube channel and so I had this advantage that the other person didn't have, and I felt it. It's like, no, I, 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 I want them to, hopefully they're actually listening to what I'm saying, right? And they're actually really giving me applause because they, they're, they, they hear what I'm saying. And it's not just like, oh, um, Derek is, I, man, I love this guy or something. But that's the kind of thing you can get away with. But then you release a special or two or three like Brendan Schaub. Now everybody gets to see it. And then all of a sudden, all the people that are making content in the Rogan Spear get to trash it. Other people that don't really know too much about this, it, it leaks in their recommended. If you watch Brendan Schaub's podcast all the time, all of a sudden, some of these videos start leaking into your recommendations too. And all of a sudden, the jig starts to be up. <laughs> <laughs> your 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 Reddit, your subreddit is just is completely against you, you know? Like it's stuff like that that you could he could have avoided, but you know, unfortunately he wasn't that savvy with the internet and YouTube culture and all that stuff. And and you know, fair play. You know, you shouldn't expect him to be that anyway. He was just this athlete that was doing UFC for a while and then, you know, just wanted to try something else because Joe Rogan convinced him to. And that's the thing where 
a lot of people laughed about this situation. And uh, there's a part of me, obviously, that thinks it's funny. And it's like, good, great. He's finally going to chill out on that stuff. And he's just going to, you know, take care of his family and whatnot. But I also felt a little bad for him. Because you can tell, you can tell the vibes. Like, he definitely was broken. Right? It, like... I can't even imagine. I know it would never happen to me because I, I would never put myself in those type of situations to get that much hate. Like, I would never just truck forward with something that I know I have no business being a part of. Like, I once I feel like I've done enough of something or if I've even dabbled a little bit, I'm like, oh, that was fun, and I'll just piss off. All right, it's so even like my main YouTube channel doing some comedy, doing some uh, some some political commentary. And once I figured out it ran its course where I've said all that I can say, it's getting repetitive and um, the culture is shifting a bit and it's just like it's not as funny anymore. I just left, you know, and there's some people that still truck. It up, they still go. They're still trying to keep it up. They're still trying to stay relevant or whatever. And I'm just like, eh, whatever, you know, just do something that you, you are passionate about. And I wonder about Brendan Schaub. When Joe Rogan, you know, infamously trashed him live on that, uh, on the, you know, they recorded the podcast at Joe Rogan's studio, but it was a Fighter and the Kid podcast. And Joe Rogan just trashed Brendan Schaub. I wonder what would have happened if Joe took the other route and encouraged Brendan to change camps. Keep going, man. You're a great athlete. You just need to adjust a few things, right? Like, that's what people usually do in those situations because there are countless amounts of UFC fighters, just MMA fighters in general that have, you know, they were feeling a little less passionate because their career wasn't going exactly as they thought. Now, to be fair, Brendan Schaub wasn't, a lot of people talk about Brendan Schaub like he was the worst or he was just a complete failure in the UFC. Uh, his UFC career wasn't amazing. It was iffy in the beginning. But overall, his MMA record was 10-5. and five. That's not bad, especially when you're first starting out like that. And it wasn't like he was going to get cut. He wasn't going to get cut. There was there was enough star power to keep Brendan Schaub in the UFC. Him being friends with Joe Rogan is a big advantage. And there's a lot of fighters that have switched camps and completely reinvented themselves and even became champions, right? Like... There's a lot of examples of even fighters that are in their twilight years that have found the right people to work with, and they're just on these crazy winning streaks, knocking people out in their 40s. Um, it's just one of those things that people will argue and say, well, you saved him from the CTE and stuff. And yeah, there is that one aspect, of course. But I just wonder if Joe didn't, right, let's say, love Brendan so much to essentially pull him out of this thing, where would his career would have gone? Where would it have gone? Maybe Brendan Shaw would have gotten a job within the UFC in a different way and done his podcast as well. I don't know. Joe Rogan does that. He's a commentator with the UFC. Maybe he still would have been somewhat associated with it. Who knows? But there's a lot of things that I just feel like people that have made it to the UFC, for example, that is the pinnacle of mixed martial arts. And... I don't think there's a single person that has made it to the UFC that didn't have dreams and aspirations of being a champion at the highest level. I just don't believe that. There's people that say, oh, I just want money. I just want money. Well, there's other organizations. There's like a Bellator or a PFL, smaller MMA organizations, where you can probably make just as much or even more money and fight people that aren't nearly as good in the UFC. Because there's killers everywhere, but rest assured... The UFC absolutely have snatched up the best fighters. And so there's plenty of people. They do tournaments, real tournaments and other promotions. And the prize in like a Bellator or a PFL will be like a million dollars. And there's people in the PFL and in Bellator that are making more money than some of the people in the top 10 in the UFC. So if you're in the UFC, you want the glory. You want, there is something to it. And so I just feel like, Joe kind of sabotaged Brendan to even give the, because there's got to be that what if factor. Who wouldn't have that? I mean, there's uh, Habib Nurmagomedov 
who retired at 29 and 0 and he says he doesn't regret it. You know, he did it because he lost his father to COVID and then his mom wanted him to come home and not fight anymore. And so he respected the wishes. But there's you can't tell me someone who was that dominant and someone who was perfect like that. You know he wanted to see how far he could have gone. I mean, of course. And so that being said, I just feel a little bit bad for Brendan Schaub in a way that I feel like maybe he could have had a fruitful career with the UFC. He could have gave it one real big go. I know he says publicly that he doesn't regret it and this and this and that. He was saying it wasn't that fun for him anymore and everything. And I'm just saying, yes, that has happened a lot of times. And then guess what? People get hungry again. It's just like even when I talk about political commentary, my main channel was mainly um, it revolved around that. I got tired and burnt out. And then I have these itches. I have these moments where I think, man, I really would like to start a new podcast with somebody. I want to start a new podcast, a political podcast where it's just comedy and politics. I get this itch almost every few weeks. But then I'm just like, ah, but I got too much other stuff going on. But you see my point that I feel like Joe, uh, uh, like I would, there's no way I would have said, yeah, the top competition, you can't hang with it. Yeah, Cain Velasquez, he would he would mess you up. Like you have no chance against him. What kind of friend is that? And so because of that, Brendan didn't have a a a, a true direction of where to go. He f manufactured that he always wanted to be in comedy. He made up a fake backstory that that's something that he always wanted to do. You know that's not true though because he never dipped his toe into it even remotely. It's like me. I've always thought about it. I've always thought about doing stand-up and going to open mics, but I never did it. But one of my friends and co-host of my podcast, he's done a few of them. So here's somebody. Here's the difference between he and I where I'm just talking shit and this guy actually really wanted to do it. So we dipped his toes in it. And so but here's Joe Rogan, one of the most popular people in that space, just gives him a platform to do it. And now he's pretending like he's always been interested in it. And it was obvious that he wasn't. <laughs> it was very obvious. And unfortunately, he never got better either. You know, I'm not saying that Brendan's never told a funny joke. You know, like I've laughed at moments on The Fighter and the Kid. But just as far as stand-up comedy, and the reason why personally I've never done it is because I'm not very good at just writing things down in general unless it is music. If it's if it's music and it's lyrics, okay, I'm going to, of course, I'm going to write that stuff down. And I do a pretty damn good job at it. But when it comes to telling a joke and setting it up and doing all this stuff, that's not me, man. I'm a riffer. I just riff. Like, I could write five minutes. I just don't want to. It just doesn't, I don't care to. Even when I did YouTube, I just didn't care to write scripts. There are people that write scripts and there's people that have a couple of bullet points and then there's mainly me i would say 99 percent of the videos i make i have ideas and then i just let it flow and i just like that better it just feels better and if i screw up who cares it doesn't matter <laughs> but yeah for brendan uh fair play i think this is the best decision he ever could have made I think he should have did this a long time ago. I don't think the gringo poppy ever should have came out, even though I glad it came out because it gave us a lot of things to talk about. It was funny. We, we all got to laugh. We all got to make videos about it. But just overall, as thinking of Brendan Schaub as an actual human being, <laughs> I just feel like, man, you, your friends just are either you don't either you have bad friends that you don't listen, either you have bad friends that don't uh, try to look out for your best interests, or you don't listen to the good friends you have that are probably telling you to stop. Because it's like, hey, you have successful podcasts, man. Like at a certain point, it, it comes down to, and I know this is a, a broke boy type of mentality, but how much money do you actually need? Like, in my opinion, if I have a handful of podcasts that are making millions of dollars a year, you know, with everything encompassed, like with the with the, the views, the sponsorships and whatnot, I think I'll be pretty good. But I guess some of these people want to live really lavish lifestyles, right? They want to have fancy cars, big houses and take really expensive trips all the time. It's like, yeah, I, I kind of want to take expensive trips every now and then, but super fancy cars, super big house. No, thank you, man. Just give me a, a regular two story, four bedroom, 
so I can have studios and art rooms and shit like that. Uh, a decent car, like a, a fucking less than thirty thousand dollar car. I am set. I am set, man. But hey, it is what it is. I digress on that. But let me know what you guys think about Brendan Schaub quitting. Uh, and I guess what I'm really interested in from you guys, if you want to put this in the comment section, do any of you feel bad for Brendan? Because I know there's people that just straight up are haters, and I I don't even think there's anything wrong with that. I totally get it. But is there anybody that has watched this arc of Brendan and felt like, damn, man, just stop. Like, please stop. Like, I... <laughs> <laughs> Just let me know. Let me know. But anyways, thanks for watching, listening, guys. And uh, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button or the like button on the way out, I'd appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video very soon.